put your hands there, say, this is God's holy word. God has invested it in me. Tonight I've got ears to hear so that I can receive. I've got a heart to get it. And I've got a mouth to speak it. So I'm going to be a participator so that I'm going to be a getter. I'm going to get a financial breakthrough at the altar tonight. No more lack. No more shortage. No more poverty. I'm going to have abundance. No more barely making it. I'm going to have an abundance and overflow. Money in the bank. I nearly said, not only change my ashtray. <laughs> How many have got coins in the ashtrays in the car? How would you like to have notes in your, in your, in your cupboard, you know? You know, oft, behind every painting in your house is safe. <laughs> and everyone is full. At nighttime, you go check the paintings. King was in the garden counting all his money. Call me Scrooge for short. Okay, so Isaiah 58, let me tell you in short, uh, since I got saved, uh, people used to call me out of places. And when me and Annalise got married, it happened to the both of us together again. But before I even met Annalise, before anything, this is the scripture combined with Joel too, that people used to call me out and prophesy over me. People used to send me letters with unknown names and say, it's not a matter who I am, but this is the word of God, and it landed in my post box with Isaiah 58 in it. You know, people used to phone me, you know, to my mother's house still, you know, and say, can I speak to Christ? God woke me up, and I need to give you this prophecy. And then we did it there above our baptismal pool. There's Isaiah 58 written out there, and this is one of the main prophecies of this church. So let's read it. I'm just going to read the important part, and you're going to participate. Cry aloud. (laughs) No. Whisper is good enough. It's funny. It seems like because God is a speaking God, He wants to hear your voice. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Oh, but brother, God is not deaf. He's not nervous either. Verse (laughs) 8. Then shall your light break forth like the morning. Your healing, your restoration, and the power of a new life shall spring forth speedily. Your righteousness, mm, your rightness, your justice, your right relationship with God shall go before you. Have you been made the righteousness of God? 2 Corinthians 5 to 1. It shall go before you. Hmm? Your right relationship with God shall go before you, conducting you to peace and prosperity. Say, I take that. So you, you're going to be conducted and guided to prosperity. It's a good word. It's not a curse word. The poverty one is the bad one. Uh-huh. Where do you get the most crime? Thank you. So it's not blessed to be poor. Where do they kill the most, shoot the most, steal the most? Mm. When last did you see a guy stopping in front of your house with a Bentley? Jumping through your window. (laughs) Gold chains around his neck, around his arm, Rolex watch on his arm. Say, can I have your money please? No, the guys come with stuff over their heads with torn clothes and you know and the baton has already been broken at the cricket okay listen and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard then shall you call 
and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. Come on, say, Hear me, Lord. Come on, Psalm 118 says, Send now prosperity. Say, Send prosperity. Come on, John 10, 10 says, The thief cometh not for but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Cry, abundant life. Come on, 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Okay, say, I'm going to prosper. It's the, it's, the, it's the poverty that's the bad word. Hmm? I think you need to inform somebody. Say, poverty is the bad one. Poverty is no sign of holiness. Let's read verse 11. And the Lord shall guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought. Uh And make fat your bones. And you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. In other words, there will always be abundant supply. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. The restorer of paths to dwell in. I, I, I want you to see restorer, repairer. Build, raise up. I I, I want you to see it, okay? So today, what are we going to raise up? What are we going to restore? What is the waste places that we're going to just close that breach? In other words, that gap. And right through the Bible, the one that we're going to look at tonight is the altar. But Kubas, we don't sacrifice anymore, so we don't have altars. But we are spiritual people, and we need to hear the voice of the Lord concerning this thing. Mm-hmm. So, when, like I said, when I got saved, this is the prophecy that people used to give me over and over. I remember the one guy, you know, we could never find his address. He called himself the Apostle John. We were in Carltonville, and I mean, about seven, eight letters came from this guy. Hmm? No stamp on the letter. But it came in the post box. Serious. Okay. It wasn't in our mailbox at the door. It was in the post box at the city. In other words, it had to be stamped. No stamp on it. My name on it, you open it from the apostle. Just Isaiah 58. Those verses that I read now. And I said, who is this guy sending me? And then we used to go to conference. Man, and I remember I got saved and I opened the Bible and it said, Mark 16, 16. You know, to those that believe these signs shall follow in my name. They shall cast out demons. They speak in new tongues. You know, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I say, Lord, I take that. But can I pray for the sick? Can I just go and lands on people? Can I go for the miracles? Is it really for everybody? And the scripture God gave me, James chapter 5. Let's go. James chapter 5. And this is how it all started. And it's still putting me in motion today after all these years. So what I'm sharing with you is not a sermon for today. It's my life. It's stuff that is burning in my heart. It's there all the time. It's stuff that God keeps on confirming to me. And because you are here, you're part of it. Verse 17. Elijah was a human being. With a nature such as we have, with feelings, with affections, a constitution like ours. Okay. In other words, he wasn't some freaky alien that fell from somewhere in space and landed here and say, okay, we don't know where it comes from because we just hear an Elijah the Tishbet came to. Ahab, you know, so we don't really know easy, but I promise you, he didn't look different than what you look. He didn't have a triangle face that was green with flashing neon lights behind his eyes. He was just a man like you and I, and I want you to get it because this really f- broke me through, you know, 40 years ago, and it's still breaking me through today. Hmm? 
And he prayed earnestly for it not to rain and no rain fell on the earth three years and then he prayed again and the heaven supplied rain and the land supplied its crops as usual okay so what is the moral of the story if we can look at the life of Elijah and see how did he get the supernatural to manifest in the natural then I know because he has a constitution like me a nature like me passions like me and he prayed and look what God had man surely in the New Testament I can get more so let's go to 1 Kings chapter 18 remember Ezekiel 37 can these bones live Oh, Lord, you know, then prophesy. You've got to use your mouth. God gave you a mouth. Ask your wife. God gave you a mouth. Don't look ugly. God gave you a mouth. Use the thing. You can use it at home. Why can't you use it in church? Hmm? You can use it all day long. Why must you be quiet in church? There's no board outside there that says silence church. That's a good board for some churches because they've got a scripture, the dead in Christ shall rise first. <laughs> like the guy that had a heart attack in church and they phoned the morgue and said, there's a guy dead in church, would you just come get him? And the preacher later on saw two guys at the back just talking, talking, talking. And he sent the elder, he said, go ask those guys who they are and what they're looking for. And they said to the preacher, which one? <laughs> okay. First Kings 18. <laughs> which is the one that's dead? <laughs> Don't worry. First Kings chapter 18. Now, you know the story. Elijah is now with Ahab, and uh, they're going to go to the mountain, and the challenge is out. Verse 20. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets. Now, those prophets are not God's prophets. Those are Baal prophets. I mean, there's, there's are occultic people, witchcraft people, man. Together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt you between two opinions? Okay, I want to ask you today. Do you want to halt between two opinions or do you want to be single-minded? Single that same James chapter 1 and 2 says, you know, if you lack wisdom, you need to ask of God, but you need to ask by faith, nothing wavering for a double-minded man is unstable in all. You've got to be single-minded. And as we're going to speak today on prosperity, you know, for the beginning of this year, you've got to be single-minded. You've got to make a decision. God wants me blessed like he said in the Bible. God wants me prosperous. God wants me not to have lack and shortage. God wants me not to live in just barely making it. God wants me to live in the overflow. You've got to make up your mind. Elijah said, how long halt you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Why? Because they were confused. Like the church is today confused. They don't know what God wants to do. Hey, brother, sister, we got a book here. And this book is about life. It's about blessings. God says, today I bring before you blessing and cursing. Life and it. Choose. It's in your heart and in your mouth to speak it. But God comes again in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. God's idea is not to see how you must struggle. Jesus came to see how you can make it, man. Let's really believe that. Then said Elijah to the people, I even I only remain a prophet of, ba of the Lord then, but Baal's prophets are 450. Now, the story, you know the rest of the story, how the Baal prophets the whole day cried unto God and screamed unto God and took their swords and started cutting them, but there was no answer from Baal. Hmm? And Elijah started mocking them and said, cry out louder, maybe he's on a trip, maybe he's on a travel. The Living Bible says maybe he sits on the toilet. I don't know, but the Living Bible. Okay, and uh, so by the time of the evening sacrifice, verse 29, 
And it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Come on, people, this is our message tonight. You say, Kubis, but you know, it's Old Testament. Hey, listen, prophets act out their parables. And because it's a prophet and he acted out and people come and they take that acting out of the parable, there's a manifestation of truth in it. So tonight, there's going to be a repairing of the altar. Okay, so the first thing that I like, now, right through this book, if you go to Genesis 8, when Noah came out of the flood, the first thing he did is he built an altar unto the Lord. When God appeared in Genesis 12 and 13 unto Abram and said, Abram, in blessing I will bless you, in multiplying I will multiply you, the first thing that Abram did is he built an altar and he sacrificed unto the Lord and God confirmed the blessing. In Genesis 26, his son Isaac, when there was a great drought in the land and God said to him, don't go down to Egypt, but sow in this land and remember how the Philistines envied him and he got such a hundredfold harvest and in Genesis 26, the first thing Isaac did, he built an altar to confirm the blessings. Genesis 31, Genesis 35, Jacob, God appeared unto Jacob. And the first thing when God confirmed, he said, the blessings that I promised, the first thing that Jacob did, so there we have Noah, we have Abram, we have Isaac, we have Jacob. Every time that God appeared and talked about blessings, the first thing they did is they built an altar. What's that story, Exodus 17? Remember when the Amalekites were fighting against Moses and them and his arms were getting tired? Remember he got, you know, her and Aaron to hold up his hands. Remember, and they cried unto the Lord and, and he had that, 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 that uh, 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 staff, you know, that rod over his shoulders like a cross. Hmm? Just go get that rod there. You just run anybody. There by, my, there by the pool, there's, a, there's that rod that I used at the pool. Oh, that's a big one if you want to run a race. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, you know, when, when Moses had the rod and he stretched it over the Red Sea, he didn't stretch it out like this like we see in the pictures. He, he stretched it out like this in, to make the form of the cross because the word used in the Hebrew is cross. And when his arms got tired and the people, you know, Aaron and them lifted up his hands. This is what they did. They put the, 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 the rod over his shoulders and they put him on a rock and they hung his hands over the... Uh, you can go read. I made a study of it and I brought it here. And they hung his hands and this is how they held his hands up. Okay? And then Moses, the Bible says, and Moses built an altar there and he said, the Lord is my banner. And the word banner there is the Lord's cross is our victory okay so there it is again huh? over and over and over you can't get away from the stuff what was that just a manifestation why because Moses was a prophet okay so because I'm a prophet we go for the prophetic stuff hmm? That's why this is a prophetic church and we see results on what we do. We're not going to be dead. So we got to manifest. We got to, you know, have parables of manifestations. Okay, so right through the Bible, it's the glory of God. Let's go to 31. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of sons of Jacob, you know. And with those stones, he built an altar. Okay, and he put the wood in, put water over it. Verse 36, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, listen, now this is James chapter 5, verse 17. Lord God of Abram, Isaac and of Israel. What is he doing? He's reminding God of what happened when the blessing word came and the altars were repaired. What was he doing repairing the altar? What is he reminding God of? Abram, Isaac, and Israel. What did the three of them do? Every time that God reminded them of blessings, they repaired and built an altar. So he said, God, here's the altar. Now I'm going to make a demand on you for the blessing. What is rain in Deuteronomy 28 and stuff? Rain is part of the blessings. Drought is part of the cursings. Hmm? God of Abram, Isaac, and Israel, and that I am your servant and I have done all these things that they were. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me. 
Hey, you got a mouth. It's not. How did this guy pray? He lifted up his voice. Hear me, O Lord. Okay. Come on, everybody in the house, you in your house. Come on, I don't care how ashamed you are to open your mouth in front of people. You can do it outside the church or you can do it in the church. Say, hear me today, O God. Hear me today, O God. Hear me today, O God. Once more, I want to see your mouth. Hear me, O God. Hear me, O God. Today is my day of supernatural, prosperous breakthrough. No more lack, no more shortage, but abundance because you promised. God likes it when we do it. I promise you, if you can get caught up in the spirit, God likes it when we remind him. He's, ah, they're actually reading my book. They're actually tapping into what I already said. Hmm? Do you want your children to suffer? So why must God be put into that category that he wants us to suffer? Hmm? If God created everything, do you think God is poor? Do you think God is angel, asking the angels tonight, have you got something to feed me with? No. You know, I've got the Holy Spirit and the Son to feed. Can you help me? No. Come on, just wake up. Do you think God is standing in front of the throne room with a boar too to feed? You, my son, came back from earth. He died on the cross. He's so poor now. You know, we can't make it in heaven. The throne room is behind in payments. Huh? Huh? If we don't chop off some of the golden streets, we're never going to make the payment on the golden throne. <laughs> what do we think God is? Huh? Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire fell. Oh. Ah. Consumed the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, everything. When the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord is God, the Lord is God. And Elijah said to them, Take the prophets of Baal and one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook and he slew them there. I think it's time to slay all these false prophets. Yeah. All these words that come to you, God don't want you to have this, God don't want you to have that. Say today, I slay all those false words in my life. I don't receive those negative reports. I'm going to have the best job, the best business, the best ministry. I'm going to have a most prosperous financial statement. I reject these false stuff, all the negative stuff, all that downgrading stuff. Did your father ever say to you, never going to make it? So did mine. Did a teacher ever say to you, you're not going to make anything in this world? Did you have a teacher like that? Maybe just one, but that thing is looming there in your mind. You're never going to make it. Huh? Where are they today? Where are we today? Say, I'm going to make it, man. Come on, shake that stuff off. Say, I shake all that stuff off. Come on, shake the dust off. I'm not receiving the stuff that they laid on me through my life. Anybody that said any negative thing about me, I shake it off today in Jesus' name. Huh? huh? I mean, you come out of one class and the teacher said, you're never going to make anything in life. You're never going to succeed. You're not ever going to get your great aid. You get in another class and the teacher said, how's it, man? You're going to be great one day. Huh? Huh? 
I mean, they called me all sorts of names. I was so skinny, man. Yeah, I had to jump under a shower to get wet. Yeah. My pajamas had one stripe. So think of all the names they gave me. My knees were too big for my legs. My neck was too long for my shoulders. Yeah. My ears were too big for my head. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. And they called me muscles and they... Yeah. And I looked them. <laughs> Worse than to be crowned. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I had to pull myself up on my own bootstraps. You can make it, you can make it. And I look at the other guys, and you know, we, we had to do gymnastics in school, you know, those days. Everybody had to do it. Yo, I couldn't even hang on that rod, man. My hands couldn't even hold me. I was so thin, but I couldn't even hang. And then you had to turn around, man. Yo, they caught me on the roof. Yo, yo. <laughs> I'm talking nonsense now, but you know, it was like, I could never do the stuff. Then you had to run and you know, you had to make that handstand thing over. Yo, they took me 10 minutes to get my breath back every time. Because I landed on my back every time. I could never land on my feet. Is there anybody else in the house? Anybody else? Come on, man. Can I just have one or two? I know the rest of you were super, but is there anyone? That's why I now wear Superman t-shirts and I have my face put on Superman's head in my garage so that when I go there, I meditate, you know. <laughs> I'm nearly 60, I haven't flown yet, but I'm gonna make it. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, we all had people to tell us we can't do it. So why don't we change it? We got a God that says we can. And especially today in the area of our finances, man. Let's read on. And Elijah, you know, verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink. There's a sound of abundance, of rain. Now tonight we've got to take the context. If we have seed in the ground, what does the seed need? Rain. So say there's a sound. Woo, I can hear it of abundance, of rain. Come on, the old story. Close your eyes and take your one finger and tap on your hand. Everybody, shh, quiet. Just your one finger. Two fingers. Shh. Three fingers. Four fingers. Come on, there's a sound of abundance of rain. Amen. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went to the top of Carmel, cast himself and put his head between his knees, and he said to his servant, go up, look, and there's nothing. He said, and again, seven times, and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there arises the cloud like out of the sea like a man's hand. I tell you, I don't care what the manifestation is like tonight. I see, I hear, I, oh man, I hear. Uh -uh. Verse 45, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds. Say it's going to happen suddenly. And wind, and there was a great rain. Say it's going to happen suddenly. There's going to come a great rain. And suddenly, I'm out of the mess. I'm in the overflow. I've got abundance. Come on, close your eyes, see it. Man, this is a meeting. This is a manifestation meeting. You've got to participate. Say, it's going to happen suddenly. Woo, it's going to happen in a twinkling of an eye. Ho, 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 I'm breaking through. The rain is falling on my seed. The abundance is coming. The harvest is big. In Jesus' name, glory, glory. Let's go to Joel 2, man. 
this is a revelation that God gave me years ago and I tell you about a couple of weeks ago somebody phoned me from Cape Town and said he listened to some DVD where I said it and he just want to thank God again for that revelation because you know no, so many people hasn't seen it but if you've seen it Joel just after Hosea fear not O land be glad and rejoice for the Lord has done great things be not afraid you wild beasts of the field for the past pastures of the wilderness have sprung up and are green the trees bear its fruit the fig tree and the vine yield their full strength be glad then ye children of Zion why rejoice in the Lord your God why for he gives you the former the early rain in just measure in righteousness he causes to come down for you the rain the former rain and the latter rain as before and the threshing floor shall be full of grain the vet shall overflow with Jews of grape and oil and I will restore and replace for you the years that have been eaten by the locusts and the worms and the whatever verse 26 and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame say yes come on take your Bible and say Lord there it is it's your word manifest confirm it Lord plenty overflow abundance man hmm? Hmm. somehow it must come somewhere it must come I mean Proverbs thirteen twenty two: the wealth of the wicked will eventually find its way into the hands of the just for whom it has been laid up the amplified used the word eventually it must find his way God answer us let the eventual time now come and let the eventually turn into an event a sudden event a twinkling of an eye event now no more postponing no more delay no more putting off in the future now 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 in Jesus name in Jesus name I mean, you can get excited next to the rugby field, next to the soccer field, next to the athletic field. Everyone, now, now, now. Why not about the word? If it's then there. Now, now, now. Now, now, now. Yes, man. Why not? Woo! I mean, I mean, Isaiah 61, where Jesus read that in Luke chapter 4, when he came out of the wilderness, remember, and he found the place in the scroll where he's written, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, you know? I mean, what's the first thing he said? Why is the Spirit on me? To bring good news to the poor. The very first thing, not healing to the sick. What does it help you healed and you've got no money? Hmm? I mean, those guys next to the road with their boards, many of them don't look sick to me. I mean, they, they, they're very tanned. <laughs> but they're on the job every morning. And they're there all day in the heat of the sun. When last did you work so hard in the sun? When last did you stand 12 hours in the sun? I mean, give the guys some credit. We told them we'll offer them a job. He said, what? Do you know what I'm making a day? 
I told you the one day I took 1,000 rand and I went to every traffic light where they're standing, I gave them each 100 rand. Just for the fun of it. You should have seen the results, the reactions. They all fell on their knees. Oh my God, thank you. Oh God, oh God, thank you. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Everyone the same. God bless you. Hallelujah. We could have had our Holy Ghost meeting. Ricky, she didn't me. Woo, hallelujah. I could have shaken the city, man. Remember, this is a meeting in the spirit realm to break you, break you through in the natural of the finances. People got promised through so many prophets that the year 2012 is going to break through your in prosperity. And we're we taking it. That's why I'm preaching it tonight. We must get it. We, we can do with a lot of stuff that we can't do without finances. We all need money. We're going to be so far ahead of the world, man. They must come to us and say, how did you get that? And we must sell the word, brother. The word. Huh? I mean, how would you like to make 56 billion every second without you doing anything? Well, you just have the gates open and the windows of heaven open. And you have no bills to pay. And if you show up enough, you've got his name. Huh? Oh, you got it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it took some time, but you got it. <laughs> Isaiah 61. Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. We know the word there is poor if you go to the Amplified Bible and if you go to Luke 4. Sending me to bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, opening prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty. For ashes. You must see the context. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. And here it comes. Isaiah 58. Same story. And they shall build the old waste places. They shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities. The desolations of many generations. Now listen to the rest and get flipped man. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. The sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall you boast yourself. For your shame you shall have double. Wee for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in the land they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be upon them. Wow. Just go back to chapter 60, man. Ooh, man, it's getting good now. Rise, shine for your light is come. Glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Gentiles shall come to your light. Hmm? Hmm? Verse 4, lift up your eyes round about and see. They all gather themselves together. They come to you. Amen. Hmm? What do they do? Then shall you see and be radiant, and your heart shall thrill and tremble with joy at the glorious deliverance be large, because the abundant wealth of the Dead Sea shall be turned to you. Amen. Unto you shall the nations come with their treasures. I take it. I take it. I sold a horse. My horse is coming. Shelby 500 GT. 
horse. I mean, there's a horse in the front, isn't it? Yeah. How can I have another horse? Build another garage. Don't look so ugly. You can go from your 1100 to 1300 Uno now. Start somewhere. Huh? And one of these days you'll hear those wild Mustangs running. Huh? Are you ready? It's coming. A mult, verse 6, it's, it's getting better, man. A multitude of camels. Okay, now we know it's not camels anymore today, so you put in there whatever you want to, you know. Camel eggs. Huh? AMGs. 65s. Huh? Double turbos. Mm. By turbo V12. So. Think big. Mm. Put some pictures in your garage. When you open your door and you look at that picture, imagine that's the door you're closing. Oh. Do it, man. Don't just say yes, go buy yourself a picture in pick and pay. You know, it's framed already, it's cheap. Go put the thing there in your garage. When you open your door, you, mm. I mean, the sound will not be the same, but let me imagine. Yeah. Young cables of Midian and Ephra and all the men from Sheba shall come bringing gold. Wow, frankincense. I mean, didn't they do that to Jesus? Now the promise is to you. They're going to bring it to you. Imagine they knock on your door, three of them, and they say, we're from Iran. We bring gold. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not Jesus. Oh, but I thought Christ is in you and the prophecy is for you. And we just saw a star and we thought you're part of the starry skies because he said your seed shall be as the stars and I'm part of that creation. So we just thought, you know, we got this oil field and, you know, and uh, we had a dream last night, you know, to bring you the first fruits of our first oil and it's like 40 billion, so we don't know. But don't take that email. If you deposit $800 in my bank account, you know, you will soon get this. Where are we? Verse 7. And the flocks of Kedah shall gather to you. The rams of Nobo shall minister to you. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar. Ha! Huh? I didn't even see that one. I just read it now. Oh, there's the altar. Come on, anybody bump somebody say, there it is again, man. The altar is, is important for this manifestation. Come on, the altar is important for this manifestation. Oh, man. I don't even want to read the rate. It's just getting better and better and better and better and better and better and better. Verse 16, you shall suck the milk of the Gentiles. You shall suck the breast of kings. Oh, not literally. I mean, you shall. I mean, it can't be literal. I mean, imagine you go to Iran and say, where's the king? Yeah, it can't be literal. All that hair in your mouth, it can't, can't be literal. Forgive me. Forgive me. Ah, verse 17. For brass I will bring gold, for iron I will bring silver, for wood brass, for stones iron I will make your offers. Oh man, violence shall no more be heard. In other words, they're not going to rob you and steal from you. They're just going to bring to you. Say, bring it on, man. Bring it on, man. Right. 1 Corinthians 9, our second last scripture, I believe, for tonight. I just want to help you to bring an avenue to help you to bring your offerings right to make sure that the blessings will be upon it and that there will be no delay. Okay, so I'm not going to speak on all the stuff that you give tonight. You know it's tithings. 
God made it so simple. He didn't work the American way. He did it the metric way so that you can just knock off the zeros. A tithe. Easy. You know that you're, you know, you got to do your tithing, your offerings, your givings. You got to sow seed. You got to bring donations. You got to partner with this fruitful ministry, Philippians 4. Okay, this is stuff that's in the Bible. If you partner with the right ministry, you get the same results as the ministry. If you give, you're going to get. If you sow, you're going to reap. If you tithe, the destroyer and destructor is going to be rebuked for your sake. I mean, it's all stuff that we know we need to do. Okay, then one day I got this revelation and I was so reluctant to do it, you know, because I'm the preacher. Now I must talk about this. And God said, see when you start doing it, what I'll do with the church. And since we did this, we saw in our church supernatural breakthrough. And this is Galatians 6, 6. We in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, I listen to this. He says, if you receive instruction in the word, show your appreciation by contributing to the teacher's support. For God is not mocked. Whatsoever you sow, you will reap. And I always read it, whatever you sow in the teacher's life, you will reap. Because you're blessed by the teachings. And then one day God just woke me up and said, ah, 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 ah. Whatever you sow, you reap. But people sow and sow and sow and don't reap. And God said, this is the insurance policy on your seed in the ground, is that find a teacher that truly gives you true word. Give something to him in appreciation. That secures the seed you sow to bring your harvest. Brother, I took that scripture for me, was it... I think 96 or 98, I think rather 98, because when did we get those videos? 96, it was made by Kenneth Hagin. 98, 98, I took that scripture. And I said, Lord, if I then sow into somebody's life that teaches me the word and I'm blessed by it, then it means it secures all the seed that I'm sowing anywhere. So now when I sow to anybody's life, I know I've got an insurance policy because I partner, I sow seed, I bless ministries, I buy cars for preachers. People here, most of the people watching are giving to me too. So that money is added because where can I get the money from? In other words, everybody adds something, I get a sum. I go buy a car and bless a preacher. Guess who's all involved? Everybody that gave. Because I call all the harvest of all the people that gave to make it possible to buy people cars and bless ministries. Every now and then I phone a preacher. I say, listen, brother, can you just give me your banking details? I I want to put 10,000 into your account. Hmm? We could do 50 already. We could do 100 already. Personally. But where did I get it from? From people that blesses me because of the word. I take it, bless somebody else, and everybody else is involved. And that secures the seed. I thought it was wonderful. Brother, there's Vesna and Sina. They were still doing our finances. We stopped that teaching seed for about three, four months. I don't know. You remember the time? And all our church finances went down. And Vessel came to me and said, what about the teaching seat? Okay, it's very quiet in the house. So I had to take boldness to say, people, if you enjoy what I preach, there's an offering in the front for me personally. And again, we started building our church, and we built this place cash. The finances just went up. And every time I neglected, neglected the church finances go down. And I thought, Lord, how can a preacher take it for himself? He says... Do you think Kenneth Copeland feels intimidated to talk about money? Do you think he's intimidated when he flies his citation jet all around the world? Do you think he's intimidated when he talks about his rich oil field? Hmm? He's not intimidated. And look what he's doing for the kingdom. Hmm? 
Okay, so listen to this. First Corinthians 9. Man, this one blessed me this morning. Now you've got to think of the altars. Hmm? We're just going to read a few verses. Verse 11 says, If we have sown the seed of spiritual good among you. Here it comes. Again, you can't take it out of the Bible. Is it too much if we reap from your material benefits? Hmm? The Bible says, an elder that rules well, you can go read it, an elder that teach the flock the word is worthy of double honor and glory. The word there is money. He's worthy of double the finances that anybody else gets. So if a church must be truly blessed, the preacher must get at least double what the richest guy gets. Oh, for preaching once a week. <laughs> no, brother, for watching over your soul and bringing you the word of God. I don't talk about a religious guy that, you know, warm up a sermon and come scream at you for half an hour. I'm talking about you going out and you are taught in the word of God. Hmm? There's plenty of people across the world. Huh? I personally partner a thousand rand with Tom Scarella a month. Why? Because I believe he's a revivalist and I believe in his ministry. Verse 13, do you not know that those men who are employed in the services of the temple get their food from the temple? And those who tend the altar share with the altar in the offerings brought. Oh my, there's some people that wish they can take this scripture out of the Bible. On the same principle, the Lord directed that those who publish the good news, the gospel, should live and get their maintenance by the gospel. I just thought I'd throw that one in because once a month, we do the seed faith offering where we give to the teacher and man, what could I have done with this money already? How many people were blessed already? How many preachers? How many ministries? Thank you everybody for giving. And myself. I'm blessed. I have a car that's paid and a house that paid. The house was given to us by a guy that we don't know. Still don't know him. Donated 3.8 million rand. Don't know the guy. True. But we have sown. Hmm? Houses and lanes. Cars and money. Built churches. Okay. Now you don't have to start with your car. Start with 10 rand. Bless somebody with 10 rand, with 20 rand. Don't try and do what somebody else does. Start at your level. Please, let me advise you tonight. Everybody in the, don't put yourself in trouble. Start where you're at. Don't try and impress people you're busy with God. Don't give 10,000 if you only have 100 to give. Don't put yourself in trouble and then come to the church and say, I've sown and I didn't get. You couldn't do 10,000, you could do 100. Do the 100, man. And I think I'm the only preacher in the world that will say that. Don't put yourself in trouble. Do what you can do. Hmm? Don't try and impress. You don't impress me if you put a big check in there and you haven't got it. Because then we've got to go to the bank and see that we can sort your stuff out because it didn't go through. And puts us all in an embarrassment. Second Samuel 24. We're closing. Listen. And Gad came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Arona the Jebusite. Okay, what was the command? Go build an altar, David. And David, according to the say of Gad, went up as the Lord commanded. And Arona looked and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. And Arona went on and bowed himself before the king on his face towards the ground. And Arona said, Wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor of thee, to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. Remember, God said he will destroy the destroyer for your sakes and stuff. And Aaron said unto David, let my Lord the king, come on, we're going to get rid of some stuff. We're not only going to get good stuff, we're going to get rid of the bad stuff. Hey, 
this offering at the altar is not going to bring the good stuff only. It's also going to get rid of the bad stuff. Harona said unto David, let my Lord the king take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. Behold, here is oxen for burnt sacrifice, the threshing instruments and other instruments of the oxen for wood. And these things did Arona as a king give unto a king. Remember the story of Solomon and the queen of Sheba, how she brought unto the king to honor the king and how we give to honor the king. Oh man, I wish I could start now. There's an awesome deal. And Arona said unto the king, the Lord thy God accept you. Hey, listen. This guy said, David, I'll give you the wood. I'll give you the offerings because I'm a king and I want to honor a king. He said, God accepts what you're doing. So in the spirit, yes, but in the natural. The king said to Rhoda, no. I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer offerings unto the Lord my God of that which does cost me nothing. I said, don't do what you can't do, but don't do what can't hurt you. Don't do what you can't do, but don't do what can't hurt you. Sometimes it costs to give. And you got to decide where's your limits and what can you do. And God will honor it. So, David, let's get the altar ready. Noah, let's get the altar. Abram, Isaac, Jacob, Elijah, and Elijah was a man like us. So you here tonight, hey, 